Now that we've spent some time manipulating and analyzing rate law expressions for reaction mechanisms, let's look at two approximations that help simplify manipulating rate law expressions. The first is called the pre-equilibrium approximation. Consider the following reaction. Some reactant A is in equilibrium with an intermediate, I, which then decays to form product P. The rate constants for the forward and reverse direction of, for the equilibrium are Kf and Kr respectively, and Kp for the intermediate to convert to the product. If the rate constants for the equilibrium Kf and Kr are much larger than Kp, then the mechanism occurs in two distinct steps. The first step is where the equilibrium between the reactants and the intermediate is established and maintained during the course of the reaction. And the second step is that the intermediate then undergoes decay to form the product. This description of events is called the pre-equilibrium approximation. So let's now apply the pre-equilibrium approximation to a chemical reaction to determine the integrated rate law expressions for all the constituents. So in this case, we have a mechanism where we have A that's in equilibrium with I, and then I then decays to P, and that there are rate constants that govern each of these pieces. And for this reaction, we determine that the rate constants that are governing the equilibrium are much, much larger than the rate constant that governs the conversion from the intermediate to the product. And so if we have some initial conditions, in this case at T is equal to zero, we have um, some amount of the reactants in and then we have no intermediate and we have no product. And so again, what we're going to do is we're going to apply the pre-equilibrium approximation. We're going to determine the integrated rate law expressions for all three constituent parts. So then let's write down all the information that we know about this, this reaction. So we know that we have a rate law expression that governs the rate of change of the reactants. So D concentration of A by DT. And that's equal to the consumption, which is just... Kf times the concentration of A plus the production of A, and that again is from the reverse part of this equilibrium, so plus Kr times the intermediate I. We also can write a rate law expression for the rate of change of the concentration of the intermediate, so Di by dt, well that's equal to its production, which comes from A, so I have Kf times A, and then I have its consumption, so I'm going to subtract the equilibrium that's going in the reverse direction towards A. So I've got minus Kr times the concentration of I. And then I also have its conversion into P. So I have minus Kp also times the concentration of I. I can also write a rate law expression for the rate of change of the formation of the product. So dp by dt, that's equal to, and again, it's, there's just production of the product, and that's just the conversion of I. So then I have that is equal to Kp times the concentration of I. I also have an expression that governs just the total amount of stuff I have in my system. And since at t is equal to zero, I only have A0, then that means then that the three constituent parts, A, I, and P, must sum to equal the total amount of stuff that I had originally, which was A0. And then finally, I have what the pre-equilibrium approximation tells me, and that Again, because the rate constants that govern the equilibrium are much larger than the rate constant that governs the conversion of the intermediate into the product, then I can then say, well, the equilibrium forms and it's stable for the course of the reaction. And so then I can just write products over reactants is equal to the rate constant. And so then I'm going to write then the concentration of I, since it's the product in this reaction, over the concentration of A, that's the reactant, and that's equal to some equilibrium constant k, and we saw earlier, well, that's also equal to the ratio of the forward rate constant divided by the reverse rate constant. And so then it's based on these five expressions, we're going to pick and choose between them to be able to solve and determine what is the integrated rate law expressions for the reactants A, the intermediates I, and the products P. So the strategy that we're going to employ to solve this is that we're going to first find what our concentration of the product is. And so we're ultimately going to be using this, this third equation, this rate law expression that, that governs the concentration of the product or the rate of change of the concentration of the product. But of course, we have this expression in terms of, of the intermediate I. And so what we're going to do is that we're going to take our equilibrium expression, and we're going to take this, and we're going to substitute this into our 
um, conservation of moles equation, which is what number four essentially says that we only have a, f a certain set number of moles of stuff in our system. And once we have that, then I can solve for the concentration of I, which I can substitute into there, into our rate law expression for the rate of change of the concentration of the product. And once I do that, then I'm going to have an expression that's either, that's going to have constants or only the concentration of the product. And then with that, I'll be able to integrate and then get the integrated rate law expression. And once I have that, I'll be able to work backwards to get the concentration of I for all times T and also the integrated rate law expression for the concentration of A. So let's put this into practice. So like I said, the first step is I'm going to just plug in my equilibrium expression or my pre-equilibrium expression into my conservation of moles expression. So here's my concentrate or co conservation of moles expression. The amount of A naught or the total amount of stuff I have in my system has to equal to the amount of A naught, so meaning the moles of all my stuff that I have, my concentration of A, I, and P, has to equal what I started with, in this case, the concentration of A naught. And down here, if I solve for the concentration of A, this is from my pre-equilibrium expression, what we get is Kr times the concentration of I divided by Kf. And so I'm going to take that expression and substitute that in up here. Concentration of A naught is equal to, and this is where my Kr concentration of I divided by Kf plus the concentration of I plus the concentration of P. And then now what I want to do is I want to simplify this expression and solve for the concentration of I. So I'm going to move my concentration of P to the other side. That gives me the concentration of A naught minus the concentration of P. And that's equal to the concentration of I times 1 plus Kr plus K or over Kf. And all I did was I just distributed out my concentration of I. My next step here is I'm just going to take what's inside my brackets here. And I'm just going to multiply this term 1 by Kf over Kf. So I'm just going to multiply it by 1 in essence. What that does is just simplify this expression a little bit. So I'm going to have the concentration of A0 minus the concentration of P. And that's equal to the concentration of I times Kf plus Kr, all divided by Kf. And then I'm just going to multiply both sides by Kf over Kf plus Kr. And then essentially all that's doing is just moving this term over to the other side. So what I'm left with is Kf over Kf plus Kr. And that's going to be multiplied by the concentration of A0, my initial amount of A in the system, minus the concentration of P. And that's now equal to the concentration of I. And so now, like I said, I now have an expression for the concentration of I. I can now substitute that into my rate law expression for the rate of change of the concentration of P. And now what I have is an expression that's now solely in terms of constants or my concentration of P. And so now I can integrate that expression and solve for the concentration of P for all time. So let's apply that strategy. So here I've got my rate law expression for the concentration of P. dP by dt is equal to my rate constant Kp times the concentration of I. We just solve for that concentration of I. So I've got dP by dt is equal to my rate constant Kp, and that's going to be equal to Kp times Kf over Kf plus Kr, and that's going to be multiplied by the concentration of A0 minus the concentration of P. What I'm now going to do is I'm just going to divide both sides by the concentration of A0 minus the concentration of P and multiply both sides by dt. And so that's essentially just moving the dt to the right-hand side and the concentration of A0 minus P over to the left-hand side. And so what I have is d concentration of P divided by the concentration of A0 minus the concentration of P. And over here on my right-hand side, I have Kp, Kf over Kf plus Kr times dt. And then in this case, now I'm ready to integrate this expression. And so on my right-hand side, I'm just integrating from 0 to t. And on my right-hand side, I'm integrating from 0 to the concentration of p. And I write 0 here on the bottom simply because in the initial conditions, my the statement of the, the question said I had no p starting in the system. So at t is equal to 0, then my amount of p in the system is also 0. 
So when I evaluate this integral, what I get is the negative natural logarithm of the concentration of A0, so the initial amount of stuff I have in my system, minus the concentration of P. And this is evaluated between zero concentration of P. And on my right-hand side, I have Kf Kp divided by Kf plus Kr T integrated between zero and T. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to move this minus sign over to the other side and then evaluate these terms according to the fundamental theorem of calculus. So doing that after I move this minus sign, then I get the natural logarithm of the concentration of A0 minus the concentration of P minus the natural logarithm of the concentration of A0, simply because the concentration of P is equal to zero. And on my right hand side, I get negative Kf Kp divided by Kf plus Kr, and that's then also multiplied by t minus zero. On my right hand side, I'm going to join together these two natural logarithm terms through the, the negative sign there, which just makes it that I have a ratio of the two terms. So the natural logarithm of the concentration of A0 minus the concentration of P divided by the concentration of A0, and then that's equal to over here minus Kf Kp divided by Kf plus Kr times T. I'm not going to take the exponent of both sides to then get rid of my natural logarithm. So I have my concentration of A0 minus my concentration of P divided by my concentration of A0, and that's equal to E raised to the power of negative Kf Kp divided by Kf plus Kp, or Kr, sorry, times T. I'm going to keep simplifying, and so that means that I'm going to multiply both sides by A0, concentration of A0 minus the concentration of P, and that's equal to the concentration of A0 times E raised to the power of negative Kf Kp divided by Kf plus Kr times T. And then from here I'm just rearranging. I'm going to solve for the concentration of P. So the concentration of P is equal to the concentration of A0 minus the concentration of A0 times E raised to the power of negative Kf Kp over Kf plus Kr times T. And then finally, I'm just going to distribute out the concentration of A0. So I have the concentration of A0 times 1 minus E raised to the power of negative Kf Kp divided by Kf plus Kr times T.